Hi everybody, welcome to the Player's Corner. I am Ted Yoder and today we are going to be looking at the song Little Drummer Boy for Christmas time. So this is based on my version off of my Christmas album Comfort and Joy and uh, again one of the main ways that I teach people how to play the hammer dulcimer is or is the way that I do it and that's a very chordal based uh, idea. I, I, it, that's what makes it really hard for me to notate anything that I do to put it down on paper uh, because a lot of the times I don't play the song the same way twice. So um, it'll have the same rhythm, the same energy, but I'll put in different patterns, if you will, of, of the chords that are underneath it. So uh, this is a more, probably a more advanced song to play and learn, but that don't let that keep you. Hopefully you'll, you'll pick some stuff out. So let's get to the dulcimers and get to it. Okay, Little Drummer Boy. So what makes this difficult is when I wrote this song, I was a different player. Um, I had a different instrument. Well, no, not necessarily. I had it laid out differently. Um, one simple thing is this A here uh, was over here, which is now an octave lower. So there's a line in there where I would go, I would go bum bum bum, and I would hit that A over here. Well, now it's an octave lower, so it, which it still sounds okay, but um, to build the song, I usually do one this way, and then a few uh, sections later I'll do. So if you don't have this low note, which a lot of you don't, um, don't worry about it. So that's a little bit, uh, uh, just kind of a disclaimer. The other thing is I was a very right-hand lead player when I first wrote this song, which isn't bad and it's not wrong. So uh, it's just now I do things a little bit differently. So what you might learn in this video is not exactly what's written or what you hear on my uh, on my Christmas album, which was recorded in 2010 and it is now 2015. So. Um, so bear that in mind, so I'm going to try and give you as much instruction as I can and, and make it sound as close to the recording as possible, so if that's what you're going for. Alright, so the intro to the song. Um, I'm going to play it slowly, I'm going to try and play it slowly, I just did it a minute ago, and it goes something like this. So first off, I use dampers, obviously. Um, secondly, it really is more about the accent than it is the notes that are played, okay? Um, and I say that like there's certain, there's certain notes that you want to hit louder and make sure you get, and other notes that are underneath that don't really matter. Because basically, if you, if you look at it this way, um, so here's the D scale, right? And if you go up, Right? The, the song also incorporates this uh, dominant 7 scale as much as this uh, major 7 scale. So, um, but we'll get into that later. So anyway, when I'm coming down, when, well, let's say when I'm walking up. Okay, so there's, there's a walk down in there from this B down to the D. And what I play in there is not that important as far as the notes, it's more of the accent. So this is the way it goes in full speed. So as you can hear in there, you'll hear certain notes that are kind of punctuated, and I believe it's the first D, one, two, three, four, one, two, A, Okay, 
So hopefully you got those accented notes um, and you can just maybe listen to it back and forth and try and figure it out. You're, so let me try and walk through. The intro is probably going to take the longest part. Um, so I'm playing D, A, two A's. Okay, so there I'm just walking through a D major second, uh, a, D, a D2 chord. So, okay. So again, the uh, with the hammering pattern, um, yeah. So kind of think of through through this whole part of this melody pulling out. I'm really bringing my left hand back to the A and my my right hand back to the D. So in general, when I'm walking down on this part up here, um, I'm coming back to the D, E, and F sharp and just kind of noodling between those notes. During the first part, I'm coming back to the D and the A here. Second time through, hit the G, and then I'm doing B, F sharp. dampers you can dampen that part if you want to okay all right so getting into the verse first off I come out of that intro and I hit the D okay so basically, as you can see, I'm just kind of droning on this A down here and, and incorporating a, the low D every now and then. Okay, so that's just the third, right? One string below. Okay. So the first time through the song, I do a third below on that part. Bum, 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 bum. The second time through, and this is what I wanted to point out before I go into the rest of the song, the second time through, I come over and I do a third above. I don't play it over there, I play it over here. And then the third time through, I take it, I think it's a six. because it's not, it's not the perfect fifth over here. So um, you go one string across and it's one above. So if you think of it as, um, it's the top two notes of the D major chord, right? The F sharp and the D, and I'm just raising them up and down. Okay, so uh, first time through is the third below. Second time through is a third above. Third time through is... So basically, I did that just to give variation to the song. The, so, okay, back to the melody. So the first time, um, uh, the, it's a D chord. a B minor so it's D to a B minor and that transition in, in between there again all I'm doing is playing around 
with the notes that are in a D chord, right? B minor, same third below. So going back to that B minor, I kind of get going through the song and I don't know when to stop. Okay, going through that B minor, I hit the B minor, I come out of the D. Okay, so basically you have your, D, your B minor here. So again, I'm just kind of adding some notes to, to kind of push you into the next chord, which is an A major. And um, so it's D major to a B minor to an A major. So uh, again, I'm sticking with this whole verse. I'm sticking on the pa rum pa pum pum on that part. I'm sticking with the third below. I'm just droning on the B and the F sharp. So when I come back down, I'm coming to the A, and I kind of stay on an A suspended, which is A, D, E. Um, I don't know why, I just did. And then I resolve it when I'm walking down. So let me go to the B. Um, uh, I hit the A and the C-sharp. Um, but then I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of droning with my left hand on the D as I'm climbing up. Once I hit that, that melody note up there, then when I'm walking down, once I get to that E, I resolve it. changes in there and it's uh, tough to get it all in. So I hit the A, I resolve this. Again, I'm just kind of bouncing on those notes, finding what I like to do. You don't have to follow that exactly. Um, I'm just messing around with the notes in the A major chord. I come down to a G. So just droning on the D, uh, then it changes to a D major and I hit this together. Okay, so I'm just droning on that D that whole time and just kind of coming down and throwing in that, that low D once I hit the change. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Um, here's the D. Stay on the D because you're hitting a G. D. A major. Okay, so I think that's that A where I normally go like this. Um, I do that twice. 
Let's jump into verse 2. The second time through, we're doing the same thing. Um, let me do the last part of the intro. Okay, so the first time on the song too, when I go back into, when I say me and my drum, I usually just do bum, bum, bum. So I go, I go into the uh, intro again. After the second verse, I do an octave and I do it rather emphatically. So the chords in there are, I'm, I do me, me, me and my drum, and I'm doing a B minor, me and my drum, A, me and my drum, G, okay, then I'm going into another little break before I go into the really big push of the third verse, or the third time through. Again, on, on those chord parts, I'm really just vamping on those, um, on those chords. This is why it's really hard for me to notate what I do, because I just kind of have these chord patterns in my head, and I just play with them. So, um... I'm just kind of playing around with the chords. I'm playing around with this box here, this D box. Um, and, but probably mostly what people run into is they'll say, well, I can play that, but it doesn't sound like you. So if that's the case, it's probably dynamics. So um, let me give you an example real quick. So if I'm going. So I'm playing it faster just for effect. But um, the, the main thing that I'm doing is I'm just kind of pulling out certain accents and I'm leaving everything else really low. Okay, so my emphasis is on the bum 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 bum, is on that bum 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 part but uh, everything else is kind of really low and I'm just kind of picking out some, some groove stuff in there. So try to, it's not about making everything, or it's not about making your louder parts louder, it's about making the parts that you don't want to stand out softer, okay? So try to remember you're laying a bed below with the chords and the, and the drones and stuff like that, you're laying a bed of sound, but it's, it's very soft, it's not the main part of the song, so the melody stands out more, okay? All right, so moving to the break between uh, verse two and verse three, we came out, of, we're coming out of this bridge. Where I have dampers, so if you don't have dampers, um, there's probably something else you can do. 
but with dampers, this is what I'm doing, okay? I'm vamping on the D. Okay, I'm vamping on the D, A, D, hitting the G, A, uh, G, F sharp. I'm going G A okay so the and so I just do that repeated the second time when I'm walking down from the A I'm doing a G F sharp and and trying to get down to that D so the main part of that is you you get a you, you bring in a different tone of a groove a muted groove and then you're opening up to this last big hurrah through the through verse 3 So I don't retard it that much when I end it. I was slowing it down to let you see what I'm doing. And so one thing that you can do with the dynamic aspect of it is um, hitting two notes at the same time. Okay, it gives you a bigger chordal sound. So like, excuse me, so if you're coming out of this, uh, this rhythmic break, right? have the extended notes and you're just dealing with a 1615 you can hit two notes at a time like this um, to give it more volume like I showed you uh, same thing with the A uh, on the B minor you hit the uh, the B and the D together now um, another way to extend those is on a B minor you have an F sharp and a D down here that you can use as well so you can do something like this Like you can hit the E and the A together to give a lower bass uh, quality to your to your A. Uh, same thing with the G. You hit the G D together or a G B. Um, so there's different things you can do to get more power and more volume, more power chord ideas from, from a smaller instrument. So go make some uh, Christmas music. Have a great day and thanks for stopping by. Whew. Okay, what you think? Uh, <laughs> uh, again, hopefully I didn't just rush through this too much and, um, and didn't give you anything concrete, but... Uh, if you got absolutely nothing out of this video, uh, I want to try and make it right. So um, just let me know in the comments below if you need extra advice or an extra follow-up video. Um, I would be more than happy to do that. 
So thanks for stopping by. Merry Christmas, everybody, and we'll see you next time.